So in the last lecture, uh, we started talking about random sampling. We discussed about what we mean by random sampling from a particular population. We said that for us, population is nothing but some underlying probability density function. And when we samples from this population in an ID fashion, we call that as random sampling. Okay, and then we started talking about sample mean, sample mean, and sample variance. So these were the definitions of sample mean, sample variance, and sample deviation. Then we looked into some of their properties. Like expected value of sample mean is nothing but the mean of the underlying population and the variance of the sample mean can be calculated to be sigma square by n. And uh, we also said that expected value of standard sample variance is nothing but the variance of the underlying population. And we actually showed this, I just give the computation and I asked you to verify this, I hope you verified. See notice that like if I say some computation to verify, please verify this may come in your quiz or any place and at that time you should not repent. Okay. And then we said that when the expected value of sample mean is equals to the mean of the underlying population, then the sample mean which is basically one of the statistics we consider, we call that statistics as unbiased. And uh, similarly, the another statistics we have is statistic we have is sample variance and we said that sample variance is also unbiased. Okay, now let's move on. When we do sampling and all, we have to do all the analysis with only some finite number of samples. Right, maybe when you do samples, when you collect samples from people, maybe you will collect maybe 100 people, 200 people, 300, 400, maybe 1000 or maybe at max few lakhs. And based on those samples only you have to do analysis or try to understand what's the underlying mean and variance of the population. And always collecting samples is a expensive task. You should not assume that okay like I will just go and get as many samples I want, no. Right? Like if you have noticed like uh, when all these uh, drugs are being tested right different vaccines are such tested they were trying to give it to different people and uh, see what is the effect of the drug and based on that they were trying to come up with how efficacy how efficient their drug is so giving it to someone and then seeing that how drug affects him that is like collecting one sample right naturally Asking more people to come for this drug testing is a very expensive thing. Like if by mistake something happens to anybody, uh, that's a lot of liability is there. So, so getting more samples is not always easy and you should not be assuming that okay samples say to like I will get as many samples. And another thing, if you want to do go and do market survey. Like if you are interested, if you are launched a new product and want to see how many people will be interested, you have to set up a whole process of getting the sample. You have to put somebody to collect, go and talk to people. Like maybe you have to employ somebody, you have to pay him for that. And he has to go and uh, talk to people. So his travel needs to be arranged. All these things, right? These are all, they, 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 they cost money. And uh, I mean all these uh, people who do poll prediction, right? Like you see that uh, they put a mammoth system for this. They put lot of people, they will send to different regions, they will talk to people. 
that's again lot involves lot of money and now things are simplified most of these samplings maybe people put it on just opinion polls like uh, just to make a uh, some web page and keep on sharing it and maybe like a through google form or something ask people to give their inputs that is like asking somebody is like a, you are basically getting one sample from that person but that itself is also going to take maybe cost you something and it's not that uh, everybody uh, you you can approach anybody like if you are start sending everybody everybody will just flag it as spam and they may not get any response okay so a lot of issues are there and that is why we should always be ready to see what kind of information we have from a given number of samples now the question is how to go about analyzing this so to simplify things what we will do is we will assume underlying population is gaussian this is our first simplification and try to understand how the analysis goes about okay and then we will consider what happens if it is non gaussian if suddenly if when the things are non gaussian things becomes complicated okay somehow gaussian distribution is something which is very amenable for analysis mathematical analysis that is why most of the times we consider from the theoretical point of view we assume gaussian distribution okay that's why this is one of the popular distribution because it's easy to analyze now when we have samples we are going to do some statistics on them it could be mainly sample mean or sample variance and now try to understand some of the properties of this when the underlying population is gaussian distribution okay now if your samples x1 x2 are all random samples and the underlying population is gaussian with mean mu and variance sigma square the sample mean itself is going to be gaussian distributed with mean mu and variance sigma square by n okay let's now is this obvious so what we are saying let's say we have this x1 x2 up to xn and each of this xi is mu sigma square and now we are saying x bar is 1 by n summation xi how do you check that this x bar is gaussian distributed what's the me me method you have ha huh? one possibility is moment generating function okay see that what is the moment generating function of x bar okay how you are going to find out it is going to be 1 upon e to the power tx you do it for some x and you know that this is nothing but e to the power t summation xi by n now i can write it as product of 1 to n expectation of e to the power t by n xi can i do this why this product is correct because they are independent now what is its value you know what is the moment generating function of a gaussian distribution right compute it at what point t by n here what is that value can somebody tell me exponential plus half sigma 
which is correct okay I don't know I'm just taking you and now let's simplify this now with this it is going to be exponential I'm adding now all of them so mu t becomes mu t plus half sigma square t square by n okay now what is this corresponds to what this distribution corresponds to now if you compare it with the template of the normal distribution this is going to have a mean of mu and variance of sigma square by n right and that is why this is going to be Gaussian with parameter mu and variance sigma square by n now x square we had now what is our s square s square is 1 by n summation now what we are saying is this x bar and s square they are independent so on a first look does it make sense because see all this x bar now we are talking about this x bar and this s square both s bar x bar and s square they all depend on the same set of samples xi see xi is let's take one particular xi that xi is there and that xi is also there in then sum so both of them do you expect it to be independent or at least what your intuition says like it's hard to uh, believe that right this x bar and s square which both of them depends on the same set of samples they are independent okay but for us we will go with the definition of independence what is the definition of independence if you compute the distribution of x bar and compute the distribution of x square and if you look into their joint distribution they should split into the marginals and it actually happens for this whenever it is Gaussian and that is why we are going to call I mean that's why it's a result that they are independent and in fact you can show this and this requires some good amount of cal calculations that's why I'm skipping that and it is there in the book which I am going to share and I will refer you which chapter and which section you have to look into for this uh, calculations okay what we are again going to do is you are going to find now you already have x bar ka distribution you already have now you need to figure out s square distribution but uh, finding the distribution of s square is going to be hard instead what you are going to do is you will look into their joint moment generating function and you will show that their joint moment generating function actually splits through that you are going to show they are independent okay and this is one of the important properties that we are going to use later and uh, thanks to the special structure of Gaussian distribution this property holds otherwise if you replace this by any other distribution this need not hold another property now this sample stand st sample variance if you multiply by n minus 1 and divided by sigma square this has a chi square distribution with n square degrees of freedom n minus 1 degrees of freedom okay so notice that x bar has Gaussian distribution and when you s square when you divide and multiply accordingly it will have chi square distribution with n minus degrees of freedom and by our definition we know that chi square distribution is related to the gamma distribution so chi square distribution with n minus degrees of freedom is nothing but gamma distribution 
with parameters n minus 1 by 2 and half ok. So, now at this point you may be wondering x bar x bar consists like when I defined x bar it has n random variables in it and each one of them is like a Gaussian random variable in this case and s square also consists of this n random variables then why it is not n degrees of freedom like I can think of these are like n components right and which all of them are like independent they can vary in an arbitrary fashion why is that they are not n degrees of freedom why it is that n minus 1. Bar for yeah so even though we have n components but there is an x bar here right and that x bar is affecting my s square their average is affecting and because of that you can just work out that like even with that if you take n minus 1 components the n components get fixed because of this x bar part here. So, because of that 1 degrees of freedom get reduced and you will end up with n minus 1 degrees of freedom ok. Now, let us continue to analyze this random sampling of this Gaussian distribution itself and when we try to un analyze this say I will tell you at this point what is our ultimate goal we want to get the parameter from samples let us say we already know it is a Gaussian already we have put the structure that is mu and sigma square. but I may not know mu and sigma square mu and sigma square unknown and what I have is I have access to the data I have samples x1 x2 up to xn and I need to mu and sigma square from data that is x1 x2 this random sample from this random sample at best I can find the sample mean and sample variance but this x bar is it same as mu that I want mu but this x bar is not same as mu right. So, that mu there will be some difference this need not be 0 and similarly this s square minus sigma square this need not be same. Now, what I want to understand how much is this actual difference is if I have to compute this only n sample. I know that this is not going to be 0 it is going to be some positive value but how much is that and uh, uh, and how can I quantify that similarly this also I know this is not going to be 0 but how much is that error and I need to quantify that. So, for that now we will start thinking about how to do that and uh, for that we will use all the Gaussian properties because in general we cannot compute it for any distribution easily, but we focus on Gaussian distribution and try to get it ok. So, in that process we are going to now in doing that we will end up studying something called student t distribution.